Good morning. It's good to be here again and always good to be here. Especially good to be here with my friend Douglas McDonald, who's been a real inspiration, a real help in my life. And we're going to share today from Matthew 25. My name's Ray Nino. And Douglas, go ahead. Well, thank you, Ray. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be with you again. Um, this morning, well, we're going to take a look at uh, Matthew 25. We, we went through Matthew 24, and um, uh, the last couple of times we were here, and now then we're still in the tribulation. We're still uh, in, in the middle of the second coming here. And, um, and we come to Matthew 25. Uh, is the uh, account of the, of the ten virgins. And I just want to read a couple verses here. In verse 1 it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, that is, thoughtless, without forethought. And five were wise, sensible, intelligent, and prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil along with them, also with their lamps. Now, I, I, can, I can bear witness to this because I... I've been overseas many times. I, uh, I've been a lot of different places, you could say, and and I'll, I'll be back here at the church or at home, and I'll think of something. And I think I need to write that down, or I need to take this or take that, and uh, and then I let it go, and then sure enough, I'm I'm gone, and I'm overseas, and somebody asks me a question, and I think, oh. I should have written that down. I can't remember where it was. Uh, I should have brought that, and I can relate to the way these the way these um, five versions were uh, that were foolish, and um, so we're we're all learning um, to to take hold of our our time and what we're doing and keep our our our, our minds focused on what we're doing. It's very easy to be distracted. And um, um, one Je thing... Yeah, Je Jesus really, if you begin to see in the parables how he so strongly paints a picture, you know, it, it doesn't come directly out necessarily and say, you know, this, this, and this, but he paints a picture and he shows so that it's easy for us to begin to understand, you know, what he, what he's saying, you know, and, and here it is, five virgins, foolish, five virgins that were wise, yeah. you know, and it's like, you know, I, I told Douglas last night we were talking about some of this and, and I said to him, I said, you know, uh, the one, vir the one group of virgins, they were prepared, they, you know, but they didn't just happen overnight. They went out and got prepared. That's right. You know, they, yeah, they, they went and got the oil. They got the flask of oil that, you know, that, that would be there when the, the the wick started to go down or whatever happened, began to happen. The other ones, they weren't prepared. And, you know, in, in my life, you know, I, I said that the thing that happened, you know, I always thought I served God. You know, after I began to, you know, have having accepted him. But... I also served all the other things that I wanted. And really, the, the, the foolish virgins, that, that's really what they were, you know, in, in the end. They, they were that. They were foolish because they were doing all the other things. You know, and as Douglas had shared in the previous chapter, that's what a lot of the people of that time were. They said, as were the days of Noah becoming, when the Son of Man comes, it'll be like the days of Noah. Well, the days of Noah says they were... You know, they were giving in marriage and doing, you know, they, they were just giving of themselves and everything but God. Yeah. You know, and uh, that that's what I found in my own life, you know, that I was, you know, there, you know, and, and believing, you know, you go to church, you do all the different aspects, you know, but then your heart is into all your other things. You know, it might be business, it might be, you know, it, it, it may be your car, it may be, 
Yeah. You know, it, it may right. be your girlfriend, it may be whatever, you know, you know, it was at the time, but you're not preparing for God. Your heart isn't like, oh, it was good to go into the house of the Lord today. It was more like, oh, I wonder when the service is going to be over so I can go watch the football game, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> but go ahead, Doug. That's correct. Now, um, the, the, th the thing I've seen, uh, really, really reading the whole Bible, but... Uh, Zeroing in on Matthew 24 and 25, um, the, these chapters uh, talk about action. They talk about moving. They talk about doing. They talk about uh, accomplishing things and, and uh, uh, being prepared and being ready um, and, and watching and being cautious and being active. And, um, and, and really, we, we, the generation that is coming up I don't know, just under, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 73, so I can't say I'm young anymore, but um, uh, th there's a whole group of people out there that, that we grew up working, you know what I mean? And uh, we, we got up and went to school. We got up and went to work, and, and um, um, we didn't just lay around. But, but, but there's a generation, and we've seen that, um, they're developing their thumbs so they can do their texting and doing all that. That's, yes. that's the development that they've spent. And we, we've seen uh, just of late with the rioting that's taken place and um, really people just looking for an excuse to, to, to rebel. Um, and I, I think to myself, all these people that were looting and robbing and burning... Uh, I wonder if they have jobs. What, what, are they, what are they doing, taking all the time to do all this? Why aren't they, um, um, as we'll see in, in the latter part of chapter 25 here, why are they not laying down their lives and helping people? And, and why aren't they uh, um, letting God do a work in their hearts, as, as we're all doing, uh, to change us? I mean... They're, the more, the more they're I selfish. Think, yeah, they're selfish people. They want what they want. That's as simple as it is. They want, they want their way. They want what they want, and they're not willing to, you know, submit their hearts to first of all to God. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, they don't acknowledge God at all. Most of them are, you know, atheists saying, "No, I don't, I don't believe in God." You know, and so uh, I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, that, that's right. That's right. So. Um, I, w I woke up last night at 2.30, uh, and uh, I've been up since then. I was reading and doing some things around the house. and um, But I was taking a look at, the, uh, at, at these ten virgins uh, while I was doing some things, and, and um, uh, looking at them, th this is still in the tribulation period time, the great tribulation, actually, and looking at them as a, as a type of Israel and uh, and God doing a work in his people, um, uh, as, as they, I wrote this down, and um, I see when I typed it up, it, it was late. But anyway, looking at the ten, uh, the ten verses as a type of Israel during the tribulation, who know that the Lord is about to return, and they know it, that return is near, and yet uh, some of them are not, spiritually prepared for it. And why is that? And that's what we've been talking about uh, briefly so far. Uh, what was the difference among the ten virgins? Why, why were five of them not ready? Why were they, five of them not prepared? And uh, uh, we all have the same amount of time. There's 24 hours in a day. Everybody has the same amount of time to do uh, and to live your life. Uh, what, 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 what were they doing with the time? What were the foolish uh, virgins doing with the time? And, and we talked about this last night. We didn't get very far. We were talking quite a bit about that at Ray's house last night. And, um, uh, but, you know, he says in the, ne you know, in the next verse, it's important because it says in the next verse, and then if you go back, but it says, you know, the, the wise had their flask, but it says, while the bridegroom lingered and was slow in coming, they all began nodding their heads and they fell asleep. You know, in, in the previous chapter, in 24, it talks about how the wicked, 
uh, you know, would say to themselves, my master is delaying, so I'm going to be gone, and you know, a, lot, a long time. So he's they, they want to go and do all their other things. They, yeah. They're not the expectation of Jesus coming is not right there before them. They think, well, he's lingering, and you know, you know, every, all these people say that he's coming soon, but it'll be a while, so I can go do what I want to do until he comes. That's right. But obviously. They weren't prepared. That's right. They weren't prepared. And, and I, I wrote down here, uh, we all at the same time, 24 hours in a day. Uh, what were those five foolish virgins doing? More importantly, what are we doing? What are we doing with our time? What are That's we right. doing as far as being uh, conscious of, of the Lord coming back? Because we're back in the same position today. Uh, Jesus is getting ready to come back. Uh, and are we ready? Are we prepared? That uh, uh, We'll see here in a little bit, but one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Eight times in these two chapters, uh, it talks about being ready, being prepared uh, to do what God wants us to do, uh, that when he comes, he finds us uh, doing those things. And... Uh, and like Ray said, but while the bridegroom uh, lingered, uh, or, or, yeah, the, 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 the virgins fell asleep. And notice it says they were, um, they were virgins. Uh, they were pure. And um, uh, we'll say that these 10 ladies were all um, good, good ladies. You know what I mean? Uh, like a lot of people that go to the church today. Uh, we go to the church, uh, uh, we look good, uh, we, 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 we know all the right things to say, uh, possibly, and um, uh, what, what, what is, the, a lot of people go to church today, they look good, but like Ray said, when church is over, they're on their phones, texting, they're on their phones, watching videos, uh, they're, they're going to the movies. Um, they're they're hanging around with with the wrong people still. Uh, they're, they're they're just doing worldly activities and, and but but yet they're they're good people and and I, we were talking about that. Uh, just because you're a nice guy, just because you're a nice lady, uh, doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Uh, being being a good guy, being a good girl, uh, won't get you there. Uh, in, in this parable here, this, this, this uh, account here of the ten virgins, uh, I wrote this down too. Uh, it said, many interpret, uh, when you read this about the oil, uh, interpret the oil in this passage as, as the work of the, of the Holy Spirit's work in salvation. And, and salvation then is more than just confessing. It's more than just saying, because it involves regeneration. Jesus said, you must be born again. And those who profess to be saved but don't actually uh, possess the Holy Spirit will be excluded from the wedding feast. And that is exactly what happened in, in this account here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, say, it goes on. It, it says again, after they fell asleep, he says, but at midnight there was a shout. Behold, the bridegroom uh, it says, come out to meet him. And then it said, and then all those virgins got, virgins got up and put their own lamps in order. Mm -hmm. That's when they discovered yeah, their lives right. weren't where it needed to be. That's right. That's what they discovered. <laughs> that's exactly what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, here he is. He's coming. He's ready now. And they, now they're looking to see what's happening in their lives. Now they're realizing they're not where they need to be. That's right. Uh, and, and the foolish said to the wise, uh, can you help me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they're, they're busy taking hold of their own selves. Uh, they, they've, but they've got their lamps and they're trimming their lamps. Uh, and, and I want you to notice this here because this goes, this, this gets pretty and. Uh, we could spend probably the whole time talking about 
our lifestyles and the lifestyles of the people in the church uh, today and, and yesterday. Uh, but 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 they were, the, the ten uh, replied in verse nine. The wise replied, uh, "There will not be enough oil uh, for us and for you. Go instead uh, to the dealers and buy for yourselves." Uh, okay. But while they were going away to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were prepared went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Now, that hit me pretty strong because but, uh, they went to the dealers uh, to, to get some oil. But now, remember, this is at midnight. So it's probably after midnight now. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, is there a gas station open anymore? You know, around here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, they were off looking for somebody to get some oil, to buy some oil from. And then it says, uh, later, uh, the virgins also uh, came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door. And I didn't say that they found any oil, but it just said they came back and, and, and the door was shut. And they said, would you let us in? Uh, but, but the bridegroom uh, he replied, I solemnly declare to you, I do not know you. I am not acquainted with you. And now that's pretty serious because we go, we go to church. Maybe you have 15 people or 150 people or 1,500 people in your church. And, and really, you don't know each other. And you don't know your pastor. Uh, you don't know Jesus. And uh, people just come in, they go through their, their, their religious drill. When the service is over, they're gone. Let, let, let me read this verse in Luke that adds to it. Luke, sure, go ahead. Luke 19, what's well, two verses? It's that they're, they're long verses, but you know it says it quite well. And it's Luke 19, 43. It says, For the time is coming upon you when your enemies will throw down a bank with pointed stakes about you and surround you and shut you in, sh in on every side. And they will dash you down to the ground and Jerusalem and your children within you and they will not leave you in, in you one stone upon another. All because you did not come progressively to recognize and know un and understand from observation and experience the time of your visitation. That is when God was visiting you. The time in which God showed himself graciously toward you and offered you salvation through Christ. When God basically was giving them the ability to fill up those lamps, to fill up those flasks. Yes. You know, they, they refused. They were doing other things. You know, so that, you know, so that when they got to the door, the door was closed. It was too late. Yeah, They missed their very visitation when God had come. And it says graciously, you know, showed himself to them. And they didn't fully accept, you know, uh, who he was. They were more concerned about who they were and what they wanted to do. Isn't, isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth uh, this morning? Uh, we've, we've been more concerned about our situations then we have the, the people around us. Uh, and we'll see when we get over here, uh, the last part of this chapter, um, how, how these people laid down, some laid their lives down and some didn't. But we, we have been taught. Uh, so we're, we're really, we're, we're without excuse. And so, so this, this, this portion of Scripture here uh, is very important. Um, because we don't want to be foolish. We want to uh, get, shake ourselves and shake each other. Uh, you got to figure out who are you. Are you the wise virgins? Or are you the foolish virgin, or, virgins? Are you, have you spent the time in your life preparing before God for his coming? Are you, you know, is your heart just bubbling in expectation of that coming? Or are you out doing what you want to do? 
and not that concern about his coming, knowing that it will be at some point, but he may well be delaying yeah. his coming. And, but it says, don't, don't be in that position because you'll not know when he'll come. That's right. That's right. And um, we, we, we must. Um, verse 13 here, it says, it says, Watch, therefore, give strict attention. Now, I can tell you we, we've not been doing that. Be cautious. Uh, a lot of us have not been very cautious. We just stumbled into things. Uh, be active. Uh, most are not really that active when it comes to doing productive things. Uh, we, we can hang around and do uh, things that feed the flesh and seem to muster up a lot of energy to do all that. But when it comes to doing things of responsible, uh, with a responsible end, uh, it's not that way. So he says, watch therefore, give strict attention, be cautious and be active, for you neither know the day nor the hour uh, when the Son of Man will come. Uh, we got to stress that. Uh, you know, watch. Uh, be ready. And, and I, I've said it over, over and over again, and, and I'll say it one more time. Uh, when, when those planes hit the trade to the Twin Towers in, uh, in New York City uh, in, uh, back on September the 11th, or whatever year that was, well, I can't remember now, but um, the, the people weren't ready for that. You could see that everybody fled the area. I mean, uh, they, they weren't prepared for that. Uh, and still, the, the, this, this virus that, that's come from China and, and infected the world, I mean, uh, people aren't ready for it. Uh, but we must be ready and not be caught by surprise in these things. We've got to learn that our lives belong to Jesus. Christ died for us uh, to make a way for us that we could be active and free uh, and, and do His will. Because as we said earlier today, uh, to He's getting ready to come again. And this is very serious. Uh, we should be more concerned about our, our, our neighbors and the people we work with and, our, 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 and help them. Are you ready? Uh, did you see what happened? Do you know what this means? I mean, uh, people don't even recognize the, the time that we're in. So... We, we, we need to shake ourselves. You know, it's interesting because we're, we're obviously uh, in a, an election year this year. And so everybody sees the seriousness of it, you know, and they're out being active. They're out trying to talk to their, you know, neighbors. They're out trying to talk to the people that they might uh, encounter, you know. But it's just as serious, more serious yeah. that Jesus is coming. You know, and, and and when he comes, it's too late. Yeah. The door's shut. I mean, that's what it says with the virgins. It's too late. It's too late. I they mean, thought at the very end, hey, we can maybe still get this done. We'll go find some more oil. They didn't find it. You can't take things for granted and assume anything. I mean, we need we need to when you're getting ready to go on a trip, make sure you you follow your list. I mean I'm more guilty than anybody probably uh, on that on that one. You know, leave the house in the morning and uh, you, you forget your pen. You, know, you forget your wallet. You forget your uh, your hearing aids. You forget your glasses. You you know, you're forgetting something. Uh, wh why don't we just stop a minute and get a hold? Do I have everything I need before I leave the house? And, th and that's what this is talking about here. Well, it's a reflection of where is our submission to God, Yeah. ultimately. Because, you know, if we went to God, he would tell us. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out of a room, you know, going somewhere, like you said, and just didn't feel quite right. Got back, got outside, and then realized, 
oh, I didn't put my hearing aids in. I didn't do this. You know, and, and it's like, yet yeah, the whole time God was there trying to tell us. Mm -hmm. I, I, I assure you that God the whole time was telling these foolish virgins, please get your life in order. Please be ready. I mean, he's telling many of you out there. I, I guarantee today he's telling many of the people that are watching this and listening that they need to get ready. You know, they need to prepare themselves for what, what's coming. They, they, they need to not be so caught up in the worldly cares. You know, and, yeah. and they, yeah. they need to be listening for the voice of God. That's right. You know, and they need to be building themselves up. I mean... There's all kind of testings going on out there. There's all kind of trials going on. You know, like you said, the virus, the, you know, all the things that are occurring, the riots in all the cities. And, you know, you can look at all that and, and, and quickly, you know, come under it all and be depressed and, you know, and go, oh, woe is me. What's happening? But the Bible says it'll happen. Yeah. He, you know, the Bible talks about it. That's exactly what Douglas has gone over in. In Matthew 24, and the whole preparation, you know, of, of the time that's coming, you know, and, and if we're not in that preparation, if we're not spending that time before God, if we're not in the Word of God, if we're not going to church and allowing our pastors to, you know, to train us and get us there, mm -hmm. when those testings come, when those trials come, we're going to fail. And then ultimately... We're going to fail just like those foolish virgins, and the door's going to be shut. Yeah, and the door's going to be shut. Um, lifestyles. There's a lot to this right, right here, our, our lifestyle. There, there's a lot to this. Um, really, this is, this is very serious. I mean, we, we, can, we, can, um, we can build our house on the sand, or we can take time and get a jackhammer and, and chip, chip away the rock and, and build, build a house on the rock. However you do it, the truth is storms are going to come. Situations are going to come. Uh, and if you're not ready and your house is on the sand, it's going down. It's going to sink. If, you're, if your house is on the rock and you've built a strong foundation... Um, you won't, you won't fall. You you won't you won't be taken over. So um, we just exhort you this morning and uh, say to you: uh, examine yourself uh, whether you're in the faith. Examine yourself to see where you stand, um, and then deal with those areas that need to be dealt with. Uh, and rejoice in those areas where God's changed you and know that he wants to keep changing you right up until he, he comes uh, to take his church away. Yeah, he says, he says that the bridegroom came and those who were prepared went in with him. We want to go in with him. Yeah. We want to go in with him. And the others, the door was shut. It closed out. They couldn't do it. Thanks for being here today. We really appreciate the time. You can come to see uh, many of our friends from Word of Faith on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.30. And uh, you can go to the uh, website at wordoffaithfellowship.org. Uh, but don't let the door shut on you today. Thank you.